This video has been created to assist you in understanding your recent diagnosis of Graves' disease. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder which affects the thyroid gland. Normally, the immune system protects the body from infection by identifying and destroying bacteria, viruses, and other potentially harmful foreign substances. But in autoimmune disease, the immune system attacks the body's own cells and organs. Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism in the United States. Hyperthyroidism is a disorder that occurs when the thyroid gland makes more thyroid hormone than the body needs. The thyroid gland is a 2-inch long, butterfly-shaped hormone-secreting gland. It is located in the front of the neck below the larynx or the voice box. The thyroid gland makes two thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. T3 is made from T4 and it is the more active hormone directly affecting the tissues. Both hormones circulate throughout the body and act on virtually every tissue and cell. How does the thyroid make T3 and T4? When the body is in need of T3 and T4, there are two areas of the brain which initiate the process. The hypothalamus releases a hormone called TRH. The TRH signals the pituitary gland to produce a hormone called TSH. The TSH signals the thyroid to make hormones. If the thyroid hormones are too high, the TSH will decrease. This will decrease the hormones. If the hormones are too low, the TSH will increase. This will increase the amount of hormones. How is Graves' disease different? In an individual with Graves' disease, the immune system produces an antibody called TSI. The antibody, TSI, mimics TSH and attaches to the thyroid cells. This attachment causes the thyroid to produce too much hormones. So how is Graves' different and what is the main issue? If you have Graves' disease, your body produces an antibody that tricks your brain into thinking you need more thyroid hormone. Your thyroid works extremely hard to keep making hormones and never stops. When you have Graves, your thyroid is hyper. This causes many of the body's functions to speed up. Here is a list of the body functions that the thyroid hormones can affect. What are common signs and symptoms of Graves' disease? Nervousness and irritability, fatigue, muscle weakness, heat intolerance, difficulty sleeping, hand tremors, rapid irregular heartbeats, weight loss, frequent bowel movements and diarrhea, bulging eyes, and can sometimes cause a goiter. How is Graves' disease diagnosed? Healthcare providers can sometimes diagnose Graves' disease based only on physical exam and medical history. The following tests will confirm the diagnosis of Graves' disease. How is Graves' disease treated? There are three ways to treat Graves' disease. Antithyroid medications, radioactive iodine treatment, and surgery to remove the diseased thyroid. Your physician will discuss the best treatment options for you. What are the risk factors for Graves' disease? Gender. Women are 10 times as likely to develop Graves' disease than men. Age. Graves' disease usually develops in people younger than 40 years old. Emotional or physical stress. And people with other immune disorders who are pregnant or who are smokers. Because a family history of Graves' disease is a known risk factor, there is likely a gene or genes that can make a person more susceptible to the disorder. The following genes have been observed in patients with Graves' disease. 
Case control studies suggest the CTLA4 gene on chromosome 2q33 is the main gene to focus on. A majority of Graves' disease research has suggested Graves' disease is an autosomal recessive disorder. Additional research is currently underway to learn more about the genetic connection of Graves' disease. The impact of healthcare policy on the patient with Graves' disease. In March 2010, the Affordable Care Act was signed by President Barack Obama. ACA enrollment begins in October of 2013, and coverage begins in January of 2014. For the patient with Graves' disease, the ACA will ensure that each patient will have access to quality, affordable health care. If the patient needs to apply for new or additional health insurance, their pre-existing condition will not impede their access to coverage. The ACA aims to improve the quality and efficiency of health care. This will benefit the patient's quality and delivery of care. Graves' disease research will be supported and new patient care models created. The most influential portion of the ACA on the Graves' disease patient with insurance coverage is Title IV, Prevention of Chronic Disease and Improving Public Health. Because the risk factors for Graves' disease include emotional stress, physical stress, and smoking, it is important that public health education and prevention are implemented in developing healthy communities. Although Title IV of the ACA will assist the patient with Graves' disease, there is a possible way to enhance this assistance. By inserting the CSUMB BSN Healthy Aging Policy into the Affordable Care Act Title IV, we can produce optimal prevention of chronic disease and public health education. This implementation will ensure the United States citizens receive education about the biggest threats to their health. The Healthy Aging Policy focuses on the most critical issues facing healthy aging in America. Obesity, adverse childhood experiences, toxic exposures in our environment, The importance of physical activity, after school programs, and educational funding. Access to the healthy aging policy will assist the Graves disease patient in maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Access to this policy may even prevent the disease altogether. Physicians have long suspected that severe emotional stress can set off Graves' disease in some patients. If these patients had access to the healthy aging policy, would they develop the disease? The life course theory suggests that toxic exposure during a critical developmental moment could remain latent throughout the body until one day it is triggered by a triggering event. If this is the case concerning Graves' disease, the healthy aging policy could prevent this disease. The combination of the ACA Title IV and the healthy aging policy is the first step in the right direction to prevent disease.